Is this good? Yes? Hello. It's really nice to be here. You know why? Because I'm a virologist. And I spent most of my life in a dark, ugly room behind a microscope trying to understand how pre-pandemic viruses become pandemic viruses. And now, we find ourselves in the middle of one of the worst... I need a slide chair. Ah, here it is. In, in one of the worst pandemics that mankind have, has, has ever faced. And we cannot ignore what this pandemic is trying to tell us every day. And so what I've done is I have put together some pandemic teachings, which I hope will become learnings. And these pandemic teachings are not the truth. They are not, um, they are not necessarily the most important. They are here to make you think, because we are at a unique, changing moment. Pandemics are transformational events. And we have to take the good energy that comes with pandemics to find new ways forward. So here are my seven pandemic teachings. They are mine, but you will have others. It doesn't matter. This is not really about the content, it's about the method. And so please bear with me for, for a few ideas. So number one, okay. Uh, you guys um, really did not expect a pandemic, right? I was certain that a pandemic was going to come. Uh, it was just a matter of time. And you know why? Because we know that the health of humans is interconnected with the health of animals, because, by the way, just in case, we are animals. We're not plants, right? Okay. So our health is interconnected to the health of animals, of plants, and of the environment. And therefore, this needs to be the beating heart of how we react in the future to these problems. Because you know what? New pandemics are going to come. They are. This is history repeating itself. But also, some of the things that we would have never imagined... You're talking to someone who spent, like, lots of time, okay, lots, behind understanding pandemics. And what we didn't see that was coming was that institutional denial can be fueled by social media, and it would cause the failure of any pandemic preparedness plan. Because people follow their leaders, and if their leaders ridicule what the WHO, the WHO alarm of a public health emergency of international concern, what do we expect people to do? They're going to follow their leaders. And at that moment, deny, at that moment of denial, we lost half of our people, at least. Now, we've heard very much about this story. Vaccine equity is now a fundamental priority. We cannot mess around with this anymore. We have a world that needs to be protected from this virus, and we can do it with vaccines. But we need to think out of the box, because there are many countries that, for example, do not have electricity all the time, and therefore they do not have access to the cold chain. The cold chain means that the vaccines that we have now need to be stored and distributed at low or ultra-low temperature. And this is not equitable. We need to think of new vaccines. We need to think of vaccines that, for example, can be stored at room temperature and that can be delivered without having a gigantic box around it, which is actually a gigantic freezer that needs to be attached to electricity. 
There is no economy without healthy people. I'm so sorry I'm saying this for all the economists in the room. We need healthy people to make the economy turn. And health needs to be central and needs to be in all policies. And I would like you to keep this concept in mind, which was mentioned yesterday by Professor Mario Monti, because this is the core of the future. Resource sustainability and climate efforts must be accelerated. We cannot mess around with our planet anymore. We cannot pretend that this is not a closed system. This is a closed system. So maybe as economists you get this concept and you understand that whatever you do in one part of the system is going to have ramifications on the other parts of the system. Now, this was like a surprise. Really? COVID-19 is the most pervasive event that we have experienced, certainly the most perv pervasive health event. And you know what? Mm -hmm. It affects men, women, children. And you know what? They're not affected in the same way. And actually, we're seeing numbers and figures which none of us would have imagined. Women die less. Women most probably cost less. But women are the ones who have the greatest burden from this pandemic. And finally, we cannot continue talking to ourselves. We have to talk to people. We need to empower people because people are the engines of change, not the elite and not academics or people who sit behind microscopes like myself, or used to, rather. And so this brings me to the building blocks of the future. What are the building blocks of the future? Well, health is a system, okay? Health is something that is not only linked to humans, but it is linked to the rest of the planet. Agree? I think that more or less we can agree on that. Resource efficiency and climate action are urgent. Social media, I think, are the greatest drivers of health in this particular moment. The virus behaves as a virus. Social media can, can fuel misinformation and get people confused and make them do the wrong thing, like not wearing a mask. We are going to have to wear a mask. We are going to have to continue getting vaccines, and we are going to have to uh, listen to the right sources of information. People. We can't do anything without people. There's no way that we can, we can manage the situation appropriately if individuals are not empowered to do the right things. We need healthy individuals for a healthy economy, or else there will be no economy. We need more equitable vaccines, and we need more equitable health care. And finally, we must understand the importance of diversity. But these are building blocks. And I want to take another, um, another other words that were said yesterday. We need to think out of the box, because this is a transformational event. We cannot use the same concepts, the same ideas, the same building blocks we had before for, for a world that's going to be so different from, the, from, where, from where we started off. And so, please, bear with me and look at how we can free those words. It's not about the boxes, it's not about the silos, it's about the concepts. And these concepts need to be freed from their box. And you know what? They need to be assembled in a different way. These boxes need to transform themselves into a mechanism of convergence. At the center of that, we have health in all policies. And this is our priority. This is your priority. There are students in this room. This is something that you should fight for. This is something that you should lead. And this brings me to my last slide. 
Where is the new stuff? Where is the excitement? Where are you students going to be finding the solutions for a better future? You know where? In between those boxes. Interdisciplinarity, connecting things that were never connected before and that now we can connect. We have incredible resources, we have big data, we have incredible computing capacities. And you know what we have? We have lots of people who are talking, talking, talking about how important it is to look beyond their borders and they're not doing it. And so my cry and my, my invitation for you today is please, please, let's do it. Let's do this um, interdisciplinary convergence that is so essential to join the dots in what is a closed system. And with this, I thank you, and I wish you um, a very good meeting, and thanks so much for having me.